Okay, right, so today's video is gonna be super off the cuff. We're just gonna wing it. What I need to do, I fly to America tomorrow. Well, whenever you watch this, it would have been in the past. But I've got said rifle case. This rifle case did come with custom foam. But when I flew back last year, I absolutely destroyed my old foam. And um, it's no good anymore. So what we need to do is um, fire on unloaded um, what we need to do let's pop that there we're gonna need that um, is cut new foam and to do that you need to start by finding foam so I use actually normal foam foam and I got this from a company called true form bedding they actually make mattresses they're the mattress I trust my back with they're also gonna be the uh, foam of choice I trust my rifle in then what you'll need is this uh, I use a little just normal carpenter's knife and some fresh knives. If you're really in a hurry and you can hold your breath for a while, what does work really well is heating the sucker up. Because then, oh, I almost put the, caught the mic thingy on fire. That's going to work wonders for just slicing effortlessly through, um, through the foam. But the gas that comes up from that, I don't think that's going to be very good for half, so avoid those. So I generally go, I, I put a fan on just slightly off the side. I heat up the blade and I draw my line while I hold my breath. Okay, cool. Next thing you're going to want to do, just by the way, my foam, I measured the whole uh, length of the case. I measured how deep my case is. And then what I did was, I obviously also measured how wide my case is. So I'm actually going to take this piece of foam. And I've got two separate pieces of foam that will either be another piece at the top and another piece at the bottom to make sure I've got one complete sealed unit. Now you may say at this point in time... Nah. Sorry, my mom's phoning me. Right guys, sorry about that. I had to take the mom phone call. So we were saying... Black rifle, white foam. That's gonna look... Super crap. You're damn right it is. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna change that. Now, what you can't see is this foam is actually pretty flexible too. It's got a lot of give. So we're gonna need to stiffen up that foam and what works great for that is this stuff. Plasti Dip. This is the stuff you put on your wheels if you live where people have black wheels. Um, that's gonna stiffen up the foam and it's gonna change the color. It dries really quickly. So what we need to do now is figure out the orientation. Very important tip, I see guys doing this wrong all the time. When you're carrying your rifle by the handle, you're gonna want it to have the scope up. I'll tell you why. Because when you drop it down, you've had a long travel day, and you just drop it that last little bit, if you put your rifle down like this, the handle's here, which will come this way, that means your scope is at the bottom, and you've got the whole weight of the rifle going down onto your scope, and that just adds another element where you could possibly get a little knock on your scope which is not something we want. Having said that, I've seen videos of the guys at the airport just chucking those rifle cases from the plane onto the little trolley thingy and my mate's rifle actually hit the side, went off and fell onto the tar. It was horrific to watch. Anyway, let me get my orientation done. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put everything I wanna put in the case and leave space for other stuff if I wanna modify it later. So that's gonna be for me, magazines, maybe some tools, rifle obviously, and a whole bunch of other stuff, cause uh, I can get quite a few weighty items in this. I'm also still deciding if I'm gonna go stock out extended and take up a significant amount of space in the rifle case, or if I'm gonna do this. I think I'm gonna go for it this way, which does make the rifle a little bit thicker, and also why I've made my center piece a little bit thicker. And if I do that, I'm possibly just gonna add another little thin piece of foam to cover up this extra little strip on top to make sure it can't tip within the case. Anyway, I'm gonna change the camera angle. We're gonna do the whole layout. We're gonna take a cookie pen. We're gonna trace the whole rifle and then we'll get to cutting. It's gonna take a while. So I am going to just do the layout, form bits and pieces of it and show you guys once we start cutting. 
So what I'm doing at the moment is just making space um, to go around the wheels. Okay, right, our bottom layer is in. Um, I've just cut around the wheels there so we can get this bottom thin section uh, settled in. What I'm going to do next is layer another thin section over that and then we'll get to work on the main body of the case. Now what I'm going to do for fun is just edge these two corners at the back so we can sit in this case a little bit better. Okay, we may need to step up our flame because the little flame's not doing much. Let's stop messing around and get serious. I'm not sure if you could hear that, but as I sat down on the case and I pulled it open, it went like that. Because this case does seal, it is waterproof, which is super cool. So you can go river rafting. Okay, that fits like a glove. I always have them cut it slightly, slightly, slightly too wide so that it just sits in there nice and snug. Get it all the way up against the back. Run it in. Right. There are companies that charge you to laser cut this custom foam for you, but I have seen them do stuff upside down. I don't know if anybody in South Africa does that, but I don't think you need to. This is super easy to do. I'm gonna get a bigger flame, put the large section in, just do a better job on rounding those corners because I want those to be super good. And uh, then we'll start doing the layout. So <clears throat> this one actually fits good enough that I'm not gonna bother rounding the corners. So we can jump straight into our layout. Okay, always important to make doubly, triply sure that your rifle is positioned with the scope up. Now in this configuration, the case is not gonna go close because there's too much rifle. So we need to make some holes. There's a little bit of protective padding on the top, that's gonna be fine. Um, now I'm gonna go grab my Koki and we're gonna start measuring. Measure twice, cut once. Um, bipod is on, I'm just gonna sort of do a rough layout of where I, I'm wanting what. I'm leaving myself enough room like this so that if there's a significant movement, nothing's going to shift and hit the edges of my, of my case. Okay, so first things first, it's going to be my magazines. That's going to be the most important thing. Um, I've got these new MDT 12 round mags. Because they're too long, I cannot put them in like this. I'm going to have to cut through all the layers of foam. So I'm just going to go like that and go one, two, three, or something like this. Okay, right, so um, I've just taken a few pictures with my cell phone from the top down so I can see exactly where what is before I start mocking things out because I'm going to take the other stuff out the way. You will notice there's a gigantic section on the front of this case where there's nothing. And um, I've actually left that like that on purpose so that if I buy stuff there or I want to add stuff in the future, I still have real estate to work with. And the foam's super cheap. It was less than 200 bucks for all the foam. So uh, I guess you could waste it and just put the whole rifle in its entire state with no um, folding stock. But yeah, I quite like just planning ahead and leaving space for more stuff. You never know what you come back with. So uh, now we're going to jump um, to our permanent Kogis. I generally have two colors. One is what I'm going to cut. This one is erasing stuff that I don't want to cut. Don't worry about drawing too many lines. You're going to spray over it just now. So uh, let's get cracking. Right, so we finished cutting out the rifle. This is sort of what we're working with. I'm gonna try and give you guys the best top down I can. The lines don't need to be perfect, like here for example. And that can be a straight line once you actually make the cuts. This is what we're gonna be working with when we remove the rifle. That's sort of the outline we're working with. Um, so I'm gonna continue 
put all the other elements in, in these sections here and um, then we'll get to cutting. Right, so I've taken the big piece of foam out the case because I want to work on the countertop there so I can see better straight from the top and um, not to make any parallax faults. I've put a new blade in. It is relatively sharp, this blade's brand new, but as you can see, it does take some effort to just go through this foam. If you wiggle it a little bit, you can get quite a bit done, but the cuts aren't great. Let me see if I can get this camera to focus on those cuts. The cuts aren't great. If you try to do one slow, smooth cut, you do get a better result like that. So, I'm gonna see how far I can get with the new blade, and um, then we may need to step it up to the big boy blower. And if we do that, we've got this little USB fan. Uh, would have been more dramatic had it gone on, but we do have that just to get rid of some fumes. So let's get to cutting. <clears throat> so just another quick tip. You wanna be cutting on the inside of the line. Um, so yeah, don't cut on the outside of the line because then your lines are gonna be slightly too big. So let's give it a go. I'm gonna start with sort of the easy stuff like the magazines and those kind of things before we get onto the main body of the rifle. You'll notice I filled in gaps. The only real gap I've left is for the bipod, which you don't have to do. Some people just draw like a big box around the bipod. So, moment of truth. Let's cut this foam. Right, so our first cut is done at the bottom. We didn't go quite through. But uh, the good news about that is we can fix it up when we flip it around. But nobody's ever going to see any of that. So I'm probably not even going to try to fix that. And our mag fits perfectly. So we'll continue cutting. Boom, boom, boom. We'll sort of just work our way around. So another quick tip. Like sometimes you'll have an item that's slightly too thin but you want to still cut through the whole piece of foam, then you just use a little piece of the leftover foam and you make a little insert underneath. And I'm gonna show you guys like uh, what I mean with that. Uh, my rangefinder is actually a great example. On this trip, I'm taking a little rangefinder uh, because the ranges they give are very accurate, so I don't need my big Swarovski binoculars. Um, the whole, it does fit snug, but it's a little bit too deep. So I'm gonna just take this piece of the, this section of the cutout um, I've got quite enough foam to work with here and I'm simply going to say, right, let's see what happens if we take this much off it. Let me just split that down the middle. I'm going to pop this little section right back where it came from. It will sit exactly where I want it to so I don't have to dig for it every time and once we spray everything up and this is in the case that little section is not going to bother anyone. Pro tip. Right so I've just finished cutting if we've done all our cuts right and we've cut straight through we should be able to remove the entire middle section which is where the rifle is going to lie. The reason it's crucial that I'm trying to remove the entire middle section, it's quite simple. If the rifle's gonna lie like this, I may wanna run another tiny little piece of sponge underneath the barrel, similar to what we did with the range finder and with the Kestrel, just to get, I don't want any wiggle room, that's basically it. So let's see if we did this, if we did this right. Just be very careful, because you don't wanna run a tear or anything. Oh, yeah, looking good. Stick them. I'm just kidding. Right, so this is our rifle. And uh, now I guess the moment of truth is to head on back over to the case, but this time we can put the case on top of the workbench, drop the piece of foam in and see if the rifle fits. Pop this piece off to the side, don't let the dogs get to it. Also crucial, when you're cutting to make sure you cut straight down because otherwise if you've got that knife at a slight angle your whole cutout is going to taper in like this and that's only good for carving pumpkins which is something we don't do in South Africa. If you've ever carved a pumpkin you'll know what I'm talking about. So I'm going to take everything out, drop the case back on the top 
and then let's check our, our fit. Okay, it's looking like the wheels, the sections, because this case is on wheels, the sections where the wheels are are causing a little bit of lift on this side. So this is where I'm actually going to use the heated knife and just edge out a little bit around that wheel. Turn that torch off, find our little mark, and just try and do the same angle. I think I may have cut that a little bit too deep. Go a little further in. And we should be perfect. Okay, cool. Let's grab our rifle. Okay, so now that we're all set, the foam fits everything, it's time to pack everything back in the case. Double check everything fits before we start spray painting things. So let's jump onto that and uh, check if everything fits as it's meant to fit. So I'm going to start by just laying in the rifle first. What I'm probably going to end up doing is cutting another hole. Even though the rifle encapsulates the bolt, I'm probably going to make another space for the bolt somewhere. I'm still sort of deciding if I'm going to do that. So moment of truth, rifle, I want this to be as snug as possible. That means no movement. And um, this is mission accomplished for me. That rifle is sitting very securely. No need for anything underneath. Uh, no wiggles, foam everywhere we need to have foam. Perfect. Right, it's always good that we plan ahead. Uh, good thing I left a little bit of space at the front because I actually did end up putting a couple of extra things in there. I haven't filmed that but because it's pretty much more of the same. What's very important to do now is take these little foam inserts what, that you're using to raise certain things, put them one side, because at this point in time, your whole workshop is gonna be full of foam pieces lying everywhere with the little cutouts. Take the pieces that are your sort of, your leveling pieces, put them on one side, get something to work with the spray paint, open up all the windows and the stuff so you've got good ventilation, shake the can and let's get to it. Right, so I'm just about topping up everything, all the little... It doesn't have to be perfect because as soon as you put your item in there, you won't see any color differences and stuff like that. Right, okay, so I'm going to give this about an 8 out of 10 on the dry scale. As you can see, our bits um, on the inside are relatively in there. I mean, that's not going to come unstuck. Well, it will come unstuck if I push it really hard. I can't touch the edges. Nothing's giving off on my hands. It's probably been about 20 maybe 20 minutes since I um, sprayed it. I have skipped this step of spraying it on the back. Here you can see our little cutouts we did for the wheels. So wheels this side, let's drop this baby in and see what will work. fit is great as soon as the rifle comes in it's going to fill up any gaps now spot the obvious how do we fix that well it's quite simple so fixing these white spots is actually quite easy you just take a new color cookie pen or the same color and just mark roughly where you're going to want to be going so i've already marked out these you just pull a line there pull a line there pull a line there and just Roughly mark these areas so that I know, listen, I need to come back here. So I'm going to pull this section back out. Just grab, spray this separate section, leave that to dry, and then we can pack the whole Okay, thing. cool. So we're basically dry to the touch. This is what our patch job underneath looks like. Again, keep your orientation. Wheels are that side, scope is this side. So what I find works best is once you've sort of lined it up, to push down on the middle and then work out to the edges because then it's sort of because you've had it cut like half a centimeter too wide it sort of just it just works and this is way more stiff than it was when we started off let's make sure we're over the wheels there 
And this is about as dry as it can be. This whole process, guys, the reason this process took a little while is because I filmed it for you. But the process is pretty much as long as the video, um, which is going to be, you can do this whole thing. Other than drying time, you could probably do everything in about an hour. So it's not a big job at all. Right, so guys, that pretty much wraps up the whole case. I'm gonna give you guys an overview now. This project really isn't difficult to do. The first time I did it, it's quite daunting. It's only foam, you can't really make a mistake, and if you do make a mistake, just cut next to it. By the time you spray it, you won't even see there was another cut. Um, yeah, it's a fun little thing to do. Just my last bit that I'm gonna do for this build, because I'm gonna be flying quite a lot, there's multiple stops, I'm gonna add a little extra layer of protection over the top, um, because I'm all about protection. This is a little bit of a harder piece of foam. It came with the case, and I'm gonna lay that flat over the top like this, and then we are gonna close the case. And I run gigantic locks on my rifle case. When I <clears throat> Fun little project, super easy to do, doesn't take a lot of time, Nice way to spend a Saturday morning if you can't get out and shoot and you know when you travel your rifle will be protected. By the way, I haven't said what kind of case this is. Um, it is an SKB case. So that is what I have and it works fine. I quite like the fact that it's on wheels. So when you're going through the airport, you have your main luggage, at least you can put your, um, you can drag your rifle behind you. Thank you for watching guys. Hope you enjoyed it. See ya.